hello everyone so today in this particular video i am going to uh, basically talk about uh, hazelcast client configuration how are we actually going to define all the hazelcast client configuration in a config file put that particular config file in a custom path and then read that custom path and connect to hazelcast cluster so let's get started okay so i've already written the code but i'll uh, go through the code line by line and i'll explain what exactly has been done so this is my class client declarative configuration example in this particular class i have basically this is my main method and in this main method i am first of all uh, creating the object of this particular class itself and using this object I, I i have two methods one is basically in a single method in a single class i am starting both hazelcast cluster i mean hazelcast server and hazelcast client so in this particular class itself i mean just for demonstration purpose i am doing this like this otherwise if you are actually going to do it in in some real world project i think in that case you will have separate projects for hazelcast server and here goes client but in this particular example i i mean just for uh, giving 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 an example i'm just uh, written both the code in single class file so basically i have two methods one method it will actually initialize hazelcast server and the other method will actually connect uh will actually initialize hazelcast client instance and then that particular client instance will connect to the hazelcast cluster that we created earlier so let me just quickly go through the server method that is uh, okay that will actually initialize the server so this is the method in this method what i am, what I am doing i am creating a different thread and in this thread uh this is the xml file the server xml file in which all my configuration is present so basically i have made a different video uh, which covers about uh, server configuration declarative configuration and starting hazelcast server so in this particular video i'm not going to explain this code this particular code in much detail i'll quickly explain it so in this thread what i'm going to do i'm just creating a config object using by reading this particular xml file then i'm starting hazelcast instance and finally i'm putting some data in this particular map hazelcast imap and finally i'm iterating and printing all the data which i which i have just uh, inserted in that particular imap and then i'm just starting the thread so this is what so what this method will do it will actually start a hazelcast server instance once the server is started if i go back uh let me just uh, uncomment it so once the server is started we will wait for 5 seconds and then we'll start client instance so in this particular method init hc client we will actually create hazelcast client instance and will connect to the server instance which was created in this particular method so if we go to this method uh okay so the implementation of this method is also very similar in this also i am creating a different thread and in different thread i am simply creating a client config object by reading the hazelcast client xml file which is placed in some custom path and finally creating a hazelcast client instance and that particular client instance once created and initialized and connected to the cluster instance will actually get the map which the server has already created hazelcast server if you see the name of the map the name of the map is my map in this client instance and if we see the server code okay so this is the server code so in this particular server code we are actually creating the an imap with the same name so what my client is doing my client is simply connecting to that particular map getting an instance of that my map and then just for demonstration purpose i'm simply uh, printing the size of that particular map so that's all about my uh, client hazelcast instance 
now let me okay so now the main thing is declarative configuration so all my client conf declaration declarative configuration is present in this hazelcast.xml file so first of all i'm just uh, creating an instance of this is the complete path where this particular file is present so using this particular path i'm just creating an instance of file input stream then i'm passing the reference to this xml client config builder and then i'm simply calling this particular build method on this and it will actually create a client uh, configuration using the declarative configuration now let me directly open this particular hazelcast client.xml now what i have done okay so this is my hazelcast client.xml file so the, all the configurations which are present in this xml file i have actually copied it from hazelcast uh, client library itself let me just show you okay so if i so basically this is my maven project I'll, and in my maven project in my form.xml if i open it so this is the client dependency that i've added in my form.xml now as when i'm making this video i think the latest hazelcast version that is there in the market is 5. Dot something but since i mean this whole series of videos that i have made so far i have made it on version 3.12 itself so that's why in this video also i'm using the same version but as far as uh, code is concerned as, as far as declarative config configuration of client is concerned and reading that file and creating a hazelcast client instance is concerned i think that will be same in all the versions in case if you face any issue with the latest hazelcast client version or hazelcast server version uh, you can comment your doubt in the comment section and, and i'll uh, try to resolve it as soon as possible just for the purpose of maintaining a uniform version i'm just uh, uh, although i can use a latest version but i think i mean it will be better if i stick to the version which all other videos have been made on itself so that's why i'm using client version 3.12 itself now since the dependencies are present in my form.xml if i go to external libraries i'm just trying to show from where i got that client.xml file so there you see that this is the package of hazelgast client package that has been downloaded i'll simply expand it this is my client jar okay so now here you see there are multiple configurations file so uh, there are always two options you can either define your configuration in uh, xml format or you can define your uh, configurations yaml format so in this particular video i am covering i mean i have defined my configurations in xml format so there are two files first one is default xml and the second one is full xml so default xml so this is the uh, configuration file let's say if you are creating a hazelcast client instance and if you have not uh, defined your own configurations in that case hazelcast internally reads this particular default xml file if i open this particular default xml file you will see that in this uh, client default xml file there is nothing present in this uh, default config file so it's just blank they are just uh, xml XST namespaces and all defined in this particular uh, XML file. That's it. There are no other configurations present. So what I did, I actually opened this uh, full dot XML. All the client configurations. I mean, all the properties which uh, which can be configured at Hazelcast client end are present in this uh, XML file. So what I did, I actually copied all the content from this file and I simply copied all the con content in a different file and placed this file in my custom path so basically this is my actual hazelcast client.xml but all the properties that you are that are present in this particular xml file I have actually copied it from this xml file itself client full.xml given which is present in hazelcast client library itself 
so even in your case you can simply open that particular client xml file and copy the properties which you actually want to keep in your client xml file so now let me just close it let me just open this particular my actual xml file which i have copied from that file there are some of the elements which are commented in this particular example because those properties are not needed for example you can see there this config replaces so it's not necessary for you to keep all the elements i mean okay. element whichever configurations you actually want to configure you can keep that particular configuration in this xml file and remove all the other configurations for now i have not actually removed it i have simply commented all the configurations which i thought is not uh, necessary for making this particular video for example i have configured i have commented this particular password element similarly i have commented this license key and even these properties are of no use as of now and but i had to keep some properties in, in my xml file so that's why i just uh, kept all these properties so you can see that these are all the properties network configurations which you can do at client end then there are some uh, ssl configuration which is here then there is uh, some cloud uh, connectivity configuration like uh, if your hazelcast server instance is uh, deployed on aws in that case you will have to configure this particular you will have to give all the client configuration this particular tag aws tag you will have to provide your access key secret key and all similarly for other cloud providers like gcp azure you will have to provide all the configuration but for now if you see that i have enabled i mean all these configurations are actually disabled because for this in this particular video i'm actually not uh, deploying my hazelcast server on any cloud provider i'm simply running it on my local system so that is all not needed so it's everything is disabled the enabled attribute value is false similarly i have other configurations now there are some configurations which i have commented in this particular example as you can see that there are some security credentials security elements listeners so i have simply copied all the content and commented the properties which are not needed so this is my client xml file now if you see so i have placed my client xml at this particular block this is my client.xml file which is open in my intel j as of now and this is my custom path if you see this is my actual actual source code folder where my hazelcast source code the class which i have created is actually present in this particular src folder and my custom path is here so uh my client xml path xml file is present in this particular path okay so let me again open this particular init hazelcast client is so as you can see this is my complete path and it is actually reading the client hazelcast client xml from this particular complete path itself so that's all so that's all you will have to do to actually uh, do a declarative configuration of your client hazelcast client instance and start your client now let me just start this particular class i'll simply go and run my main method okay so as you can see first of all the hazelcast server instance is getting created okay and finally the client hazelcast client start got started and map size got printed let me just scroll up from the logs you can see that first of all a hazelcast server instance server node got created member size is 1 then everything that we actually printed on uh, in my init hazelcast server method is actually getting printed over here let me again open it so i was actually putting three values two on same key and one on different key so these two values are present over here 
since I'm actually iterating over all the key set entries that I'm printing it then I'm print there's a print statement which says hazel gas server started so that is what it's printed over here so my server got started and then after some time my client got started and uh, if you can see in logs you can see that Hazelcast client 3.12 version got is started and then client got connected client there is one authentication client authentication happened with the server cluster and finally client got connected client got uh, the all the instance ip and port on which the server nodes are running finally here you can see that client is connected and finally whatever print statement we had written in the init hazelcast client instance is printed over here if i open it so this is my init hazelcast client instance i was simply printing the map size which the server node was actually creating and there is a print statement for client so as you can see that I am able to start my Hazelcast server instance and Hazelcast client instance and Hazelcast client got connected to the Hazelcast server instance so I hope it's clear to you all now I hope you will be able to do the declarative configuration of Hazelcast client in, in either XML format or YAML format and uh, start your client and connect it to your uh, Hazelcast cluster itself. So that's all for uh, for today's video. Uh, I hope I was able to clear. I hope I was able to explain what exactly is being done. It's very simple. I mean, it's very much uh, similar to what we did in Hazelcast server uh, declarative configuration. It's very much similar to that only. So yeah, that's uh, all for today in this particular video. Let me know if you have any doubt. I'll try to make another video on that and I'll try to explain it uh, in an another video.